So I started discussing special cases for motion on the rough inclined plane. Next I am going to discuss the case 2. So I am going to discuss the force, calculate the force required to move a block up along an inclined plane. We consider a block of mass m resting on the inclined surface of a fixed inclined plane with angle of inclination theta to the horizontal. Let capital F be the magnitude of the force applied on the block parallel to the inclined surface in order to move the block up along the inclined plane. The weight mg of the block acts vertically downwards. You just concentrate on listening to my explanation. I will give you the notes later. First you just listen to the explanation. The normal reaction force on the block by the inclined surface acts perpendicular to the inclined surface and directed away from the inclined surface. I choose the direction parallel to the inclined surface up along the inclined plane as x-axis. The direction perpendicular to the inclined surface as the y axis. If the line of action of normal reaction is produced backwards, then the smaller angle between the line of action of the beta mg and the line of action of normal reaction produced backwards is same as the angle of inclination theta of the inclined plane to the horizontal can resolve the weight mg into rectangular components parallel to x and y axis. For that you have to construct rectangle with adjacent side parallel to x and y axis such that this weight mg acts along the diagonal of the rectangle. The component mg cos it acts perpendicular to the inclined surface The component mg sin theta acts down the inclined plane parallel to the inclined surface. The magnitude of force applied on the block parallel to the inclined surface if is more than the magnitude of the component mg sin theta. Then the frictional force of the block acts down the inclined plane. If F is more than mg sin theta, that means the force applied on the block parallel to the inclined surface tends to move the block up along the inclined plane. The force of friction on the block by the inclined surface opposes the relative motion of the block relative to the inclined plane. The frictional force of the block by the inclined surface opposes the motion of the block relative to the inclined plane. So when F is more than mg sin theta, the block tends to move up along the incline. So frictional force on the block with the inclined surface acts down the inclined plane. So to find the magnitude of normal reaction, we'll find F y. F y represents y component resultant force of the block. That you can write n minus mg cos theta. If the block has no motion parallel to y direction, this y component resultant force is 0. Therefore, magnitude of the normal reaction of the block is equal to magnitude of the component mg cos theta. So the block starts moving up along the inclined plane only if the magnitude of force applied on the block parallel to the inclined surface. 
is large enough to overcome the component mg sin theta and also to overcome the limiting friction so block starts moving up along the incline the mallet of force applied on the block parallel to the incline surface is more than sum of the magnitude of the component mg sin theta and the mallet of the limiting friction the mallet of limiting friction is equal to nu s into n now we can write n equal to mg cos theta on the right side so the block starts moving up along the incline surface if f is more than mg sin theta plus nu s into mg cos theta so the block starts moving up along the incline plane if f is greater than mg into sin theta plus nu s into cos theta so minimum value or least value of the force to be applied in the block parallel to the inclined surface so that the block just starts sliding up along the inclined plane will be about mg into sin theta plus nu s into cos theta suppose a force equal to this minimum force needed to just start the block moving up along the inclined plane is applied on the block and let us suppose same force is maintained even after the motion begins then during the motion the frictional force on the block can be called as kinetic friction so during the motion resultant force of the block can be written as fx means x component resultant force here cap plus is the mallet of force applied to the block parallel to the inclined surface acts in the direction of the motion along positive x axis the component mg sin theta acts opposite to the direction of the motion and negative direction of x axis fk represent the mallet of kinetic friction which also acts opposite to the motion in the negative direction of x axis now we can substitute here f in this case f equal mg sin theta plus nu s cos theta that means i am going to calculate the acceleration of the block when the mallet of pulling force applied on the block i mean when the mallet of the force applied on the block parallel to the inclined surface is equal to the least force needed to start it moving that is which is equal to mg sin theta plus nu s mg cos theta so mallet of kinetic friction on the block is given by nu k into mallet of normal reaction the nu k is the equation of kinetic friction between the block and the inclined surface so we can substitute here f equal to mg sin theta plus nu s mg cos theta and mallet of kinetic friction is equal to nu k into n that is mallet of kinetic friction of the block block during the motion you can write nu k into mallet of normal reaction you can, you can write mallet of normal reaction equal to mg cos theta so you can substitute here fk equal to nu k into mg cos theta so you can cancel this mg sin theta here so mallet of the resultant force of block you can write nu s minus nu k into mg cos theta so from newton second law you can write mallet of the resultant force on the block Mark 
You could protect a mass of block and magnify calculation. You can substitute magnify result report the block on the left side. You call new s minus new k into mg cost, which is equal to m t. If you divide with the mass m, you get magnify of calculation of the block equal to new s minus new k into g cost. That means if you force is applied on the block parallel to the inclined surface <coughs> which is just sufficient to start the block moving up along the inclined surface and if the same force is maintained even after the motion begins then magnitude of its acceleration is given by a equal to nu s minus nu k into g cos theta so now i am going to show you the notes in a systematic manner for the same case in the typed form so those who are writing the notes come on get ready with your notebook and pen i'm going to show you the powerpoint presentation or type of form of these notes now look at the screen i am going to show you the conclusion of my discussion about the second case on the screen which you can start writing now once i will read out the conclusion that is shown on the screen later i will sh show you the working part which i have just explained now the minimum force to be applied on a block of mass capital m resting on inclined surface of a fixed inclined plane of angle of inclination theta to the horizontal in the direction parallel to the inclined surface so that the block just starts moving up along the inclined plane is given by f minimum equal mg into sin theta plus nu s cos theta and if the same force is maintained even after the motion begins then the acceleration of the block is given by a equal to New S minus new K into G cos theta. Come on, carry on the conclusion. In case you need more time to copy the conclusion, you can take a pause and copy the notes. I am going to show you the working for this conclusion. Our continuation to this: new S and new K are the coefficients of static and kinetic friction between the block and the inclined plane. So, figure shows the free body diagram. Capital F is the magnitude of force applied on the block parallel to the inclined surface. Small f represents the magnitude of friction for the block, but the inclined surface acts down the inclined plane if capital F is more than mg sin theta. So we can write f y equal n minus mg cos theta equal to zero, or n equal mg cos theta. Come on, copy down. The free body diagram also copy down the working. To finish writing, then I will can show you the. Continuation. In case you need more time to copy the notes, you can take a pause and copy the notes. So block starts moving up along the inclined plane if f is greater than mg sin theta plus nu s into n. As of today, n equal mg cos theta on the right side, or f is greater than mg sin theta plus nu s mg cos theta, or f is greater than mg to sin theta plus nu s cos theta. So during the motion, resultant force of block equal to f x means x comes for resultant force. 
that is capital F minus mg sin theta minus fk. Here the force applied on the block is equal to the minimum force needed to just start the block moving up along the inclined plane, which is equal to mg to sin theta plus nu f cos theta. And fk equal to magnitude of fk represents magnitude of kinetic friction of the block during the motion, which is equal to nu k into n or nu k into mg cos theta. Come on, copy down the working. In case you need more time to copy the notes, you can take a pause and copy the notes. So I am going to here substitute capital F equal to mg sin theta plus nu s cos theta and fk equal to uk to mg cos theta on the right side. So fx equal to therefore mg into sin theta So, if you open the brackets, you can write it as fx equal mg sin theta plus nu s mg cos theta minus mg sin theta minus nu k into mg cos theta. You can cancel mg sin theta here. So, you get fx equal nu s minus nu k into mg cos theta. From so Newton's second law, resultant force on the block, you can write mass into acceleration. You can substitute here fx equal nu s minus nu k into mg cos theta on the left side. Come on, copy down the working. So, you get acceleration A equal to nu s minus nu k into g cos theta. Come on, copy down the working. In case you need more time to copy the working, you can take a pause and take your own time. Next, I am going to discuss the next special case. Case 3. So coming to the next special case, let us consider a block of mass m placed on the inclined surface. Of a fixed inclined plane, which makes an angle theta to the horizontal. As I discussed in the past, in my previous class, that block begins to slide down itself, down the inclined plane, under the axis of its weight mg, and force by the inclined plane, contact force by the inclined plane, if tan theta is greater than nu s. If tan theta is greater than nu s, then the block begins to slide down the inclined plane, with an acceleration. Suppose if tan theta is less than nu s, as I explained in the past, then the block will be, if tan theta is less than nu s, then the block will be at trust on the inclined plane. So I am going to consider this case where tan theta is greater than nu s, and I am going to calculate the minimum force needed to keep the block at trust on the inclined plane. When the force is applied parallel to the inclined surface. I'd like to discuss the minimum force to be applied on the block parallel to the inclined surface so that the block can be kept at rest on the inclined plane without sliding down. That means I am going to calculate the minimum force needed to prevent the block from sliding down the inclined plane when tan theta is more than yours. If tan theta is less than nu s, then the block will automatically remain at rest on the inclined plane under the action of its weight mg and contact force by the inclined plane, which we discussed in the past. So let us consider the situation where tan theta is grand nu s. 
the way it enters the now you can again just concentrate on listening stop writing i'll show you the notes for this case next later the weight mj the block acts vertically downwards the narval reaction force on the block by the inclined plane acts perpendicular to the inclined surface and directed away from the inclined surface this weight mj the block can be resolved into rectangular components parallel to the inclined surface and perpendicular to the inclined surface the line of action of narval reaction is produced backwards the angle between the weight mg and line of action of narval reaction produced backwards will be same as the angle of inclination theta of the inclined plane to the oriented can resolve the weight mg into rectangular components parallel to the inclined surface and perpendicular to the inclined surface the component mg cos theta acts perpendicular to the inclined surface the component mg sin theta acts parallel to the inclined surface suppose if f is less than mg sin theta or magnitude of the component mg sin theta is more than this magnitude of the force applied in the block parallel to the inclined surface in that case the block tends to slide down the incline the block will have a tendency to move down the incline plane in that case frictional force on the block by the inclined surface opposes the relative motion between the block and inclined surface so force of friction on the block by the inclined surface acts up along the inclined surface if you assume that the block is at rest and the frictional force on the block by the inclined surface can be called as static friction which acts up uh, up along the inclined plane so here i choose the direction parallel to the inclined surface as positive direction of x axis the direction perpendicular to the inclined surface as positive direction of y axis just only concentrate on listening here don't write the notes now you can write the notes later so y component of resultant force you can write f y equal to n minus mg cos theta that is zero so magnitude of normal reaction of the block is same as the magnitude of the component mg cos theta so the block begins to slide down the inclined plane with some acceleration the magnitude of the component mg sin theta exceeds some of the magnitude of force applied on the block parallel to the inclined surface and limiting friction so block will be at rest if the magnitude of the component mg sin theta is less than or equal to f plus f s maximum so mg sin theta less than or equal to f plus nu s sin theta n f s maximum can write nu s sin theta or mg sin theta less than so you can write conversely block will be at rest if f plus nu s mg cos theta gram r equal to mg sin theta so block will be at rest if f is greater than or equal to mg sin theta minus nu s mg cos theta so f must be greater than so block will be at rest if 
F is greater than mg or equal to mg to sin theta or yes, cos theta and simultaneously F must be less than or equal to mg into sin theta plus plus nu s cos theta because in the previous case in the previous case we have discussed that in the previous case we have discussed that block begins to slide up block begins to move up along the inclined surface if the magnetic force applied on the block parallel to the inclined surface more than mg into sin theta plus yes cos theta that means if f is less than mg into sin theta plus yes cos theta and the block will not move up along the inclined plane as already discussed in the previous case case 2 that block begins to move up along the inclined plane if f is more than mg into sin theta plus yes cos theta that means from same discussion you can conclude that the block will not move up along the inclined plane if f is less than mg into sin theta plus yes cos theta and the block does not slide down the inclined plane if f is greater than or equal to mg sin theta minus mg, mg cos theta that means the block will be at rest on the inclined plane if f is more than this value more than or equal to mg to sin theta minus g s cos theta and simultaneously less than or equal to mg to sin theta plus g s cos theta therefore combining the two results we can say that block will be at rest on the inclined plane if mg to sin theta minus nu s cos theta less than or equal to f is less than or equal to mg into sin theta plus nu s cos theta so the magnetic minimum force to be applied in the block parallel to the inclined surface to prevent the block from sliding down the inclined plane that is magnetic minimum force to be applied in the block parallel to the inclined surface to keep it at rest or to prevent the block from sliding down the inclined plane is f minimum equal to mg into sin theta minus nu s cos theta of course this calculation is valid when tan theta is greater than nu s this concludes and i have discussed just now valid if tan theta the whole discussion is valid only when tan theta is more than nu s the whole discussion we have assumed that tan theta is less than nu s because if tan theta is less than nu s the block will be at rest on the inclined plane under the action of its weight mg and contact forces by the inclined plane. You need not have to apply any force on the block parallel to the inclined plane to keep it at rest if tan theta is less than u s. So the conclusion is that if tan theta is less than u s, then the magnitude of the minimum force to be applied on the block parallel to the inclined surface to prevent the block from sliding down the inclined plane is mg into sin theta minus u s cos theta. I am going to show you the typed form of this same case 3 now with PowerPoint presentation. So, see the conclusion of the discussion. Later, I show you the working again. That means you know we can start writing the notes. Come on, copy down the conclusion which I have written and shown on the screen. The same conclusion which I discussed just now. Consider a block of mass M placed on the inclined surface of a fixed inclined plane of angle of inclination theta to the horizontal. If tan theta is greater than yes, then the minimum force to be applied on the block parallel to the inclined surface 
in order to just prevent the block from sliding down the inclined plane is given by f minimum equal mg to sin theta minus yes cos theta come on carve down this conclusion In case you need more time to copy the conclusion, take a pause and copy the count the conclusion. I'm going to show you the working for the same conclusion. Here continuation you can write down where nu s is the coefficient of static friction between the block and the inclined plane. Can copy down the working. You can first copy the free bar diagram. Weight mg of the block acts vertically downwards to resolve into two rectangular components parallel to and perpendicular to the inclined surface. The component mg cos theta acts perpendicular to the inclined surface. The component mg sin theta acts down the inclined plane. And then the measure of normal reaction force on the block by the inclined surface, which acts perpendicular to the inclined surface and directed away from inclined surface. Capital F is the measure of the force applied on the block parallel to the inclined surface to prevent the block from sliding down the incline. Here we assume that capital F is less than mg sin theta. If capital F is less than mg sin theta, then the block will have a tendency to slide down. Then friction for the block with the inclined plane acts up along the inclined plane. Small f represents the measure of static friction on the block with the inclined plane, which acts up along the inclined surface. I have taken the direction parallel to the inclined surface, down the incline as positive x-axis and direction perpendicular to the inclined surface as y-axis. If f capital F is less than mg center and force of friction on the block acts up along the inclined plane. The block is at rest, we can conclude that resultant for the block is zero. That means f y, y component resultant force n minus mg cos theta must be zero or n equal mg cos theta. The block is at rest, even the x component resultant for the block must be also zero. From the free diagram, we can observe that fx equals, that means x component resultant for mg sin theta minus capital F minus fs. Here, a small f subscript s represents magnitude of static friction of the block by the inclined plane, equal to zero. Or you can write fs equal mg sin theta minus capital F. Come on, copy down the working. In case you need more time to copy the working, you can take a pause and take your own time. But fs is less than or equal to to n. So on the left hand side, I have substituted fs equal to mg sin theta minus capital F from the earlier step. And the block is at rest, n equal to mg cos theta on the right side. So mg sin theta minus capital F is less than or equal to as mg cos theta when the block is at rest. You can take new as mg cos theta to the left side and minus capital F to the right side. So block does not slide down. If capital F is uh, more than mg into sin theta minus as cos theta. Come on, carve it on the working. So block does not slide down if f is greater than or equal to mg to sin theta minus just cos theta. So uh, another conclusion I told you. If tan theta is greater than yes, then block will be at rest on the inclined plane if mg into sin theta minus yes cos theta less than or equal to f, which is less than or equal to sin theta plus yes cos theta. This is the condition for the block to remain at rest on the inclined plane when the force is applied on the block parallel to the inclined surface, up along the inclined plane. 
the conclusion valid when tan theta is tan s come on carve it on the working next i am going to discuss another special case case 4 you can stop writing now you can just again listen you can copy the working later you stop writing so as i told you that if a block is resting on the inclined surface of a fixed inclined plane then the block will be at rest on the inclined surface under the action of its weight mg and contact forces by the inclined plane that is under the action of weight mg and normal reaction fs if tan theta is less than yes So if tan theta is less than s, then the block will be at rest on the inclined plane. Under the action of its weight mg and normal reaction force and static friction by the inclined plane. So in this case, I would like to calculate the force which has to be applied to the block parallel to the inclined surface, so that the block begins to slide down the inclined plane. The weight mg of the block acts vertically downwards. which is the gravitational force of the block by the earth the normal reaction force of the block by the inclined surface acts perpendicular to the inclined surface and directly away from the inclined surface you can resolve the weight mg to rectangular components parallel to the inclined surface and perpendicular to the inclined surface the component mg cos it acts perpendicular to the inclined surface the component mg sin it acts down the inclined plane so we'd like to calculate the force to be applied to the block parallel to the inclined surface so that the block starts sliding down the inclined plane when you try to move the block down the inclined plane the frictional force of the block with inclined surface acts up along the inclined plane let's small f denote the magnetic friction of the block with inclined surface i choose the direction parallel to the inclined surface as x axis and direction perpendicular to the inclined surface as y axis so y component of resultant force of block you can just listen on here now you can copy with the working later f y equal n minus mg cos theta that will be zero so magnitude of normal reaction of the block is same as the magnitude of the component mg cos theta so in this case the force capital f capital f represents magnitude of force applied to the block parallel inclined surface which tends to move the block down the inclined plane even the component mg sin theta also tends to move the block down the inclined plane so the block begins to slide down the inclined plane if cap plus plus mg sin theta exceeds the limiting friction or maximum value of static friction which is equal to your ctn or cap plus plus mg sin theta is greater than us into mg cos theta I can put n equal to mg cos another right side So the block begins to slide down the inclined plane if capital F is more than U S M G cos theta minus M G sin theta. So you can take M G common here. So 
so the block begins to slide down the inclined plane if f is greater than mg into nu s cos theta minus phi theta so the least value or minimum value of the force required are to be applied on the block parallel to inclined surface so that the block may just start sliding down the inclined plane is f minimum equal to mg into nu s cos theta minus phi theta for strictly speaking the block starts sliding down only when the force applied on the block capital f exceeds this value mg into nu s cos theta minus phi theta just exceeds this value let us calculate the acceleration of the block then it is and the force applied on the block parallel to the inclined surface is equal to this minimum force needed to start it moving down the inclined plane so the matter of once the block starts sliding down the inclined plane i mean during the motion of the block the matter of friction on the block will be equal to kind of force of kinetic friction Denote of Fk, which is equal to uk into n, or uk into mg cos theta, and x component of the resultant force of the block can write capital F plus mg sine theta minus Fk. Rather, but the block is pushed down the inclined plane by applying. the minimum force needed to just start it sliding down in climb that means f is equal to here m nu s mg cos theta minus of mg center that means the force applied on the block is just enough or equal to the minimum force needed to just start it sliding down in climb plane which is given by this equation plus mg sin theta fk equal nu k into mg cos theta and cancel minus mg sin theta plus mg sin theta so you get fx equal to minus nu k nu s minus nu k into mg cos theta from newton sec law resultant of all the forces acting on the block is equal to product of its mass and angle so fx you can write m into a so you get nu S minus nu k into mg cos theta equal to mg. Therefore, the acceleration of the block you get as nu s minus nu k into g cos theta. Now I am going to show the same working on the screen. The type of form that is the PowerPoint presentation. So now. then you can start writing the working first i will show you the conclusion later i will show you the working part so come on get, get ready with your notebook and pen